Hi, welcome back. My name is Nancy and I'm going to show you how I built the Cedarwood hot tub. This hot tub is three and a half feet tall. It's five feet in diameter. It's got a floor, 55 staves that go all the way around, and it's held together by these stainless steel metal bands. It also has a plumbing system with jets, a heater, ozonator, and a filter hooked up to a 240 volt GFCI breaker. Let's get started. For this project, I purchased two by eight cedar wood from a lumber supplier. I got vertical grain, nearly perfect wood with no knots, which is expensive, but worth it. The wood alone cost almost $2,000. I start by cleaning off one side with my longer hand plane. I'll use this as a reference face for cutting on the table saw. At the lumber yard, I found a bunch of boards at seven foot lengths, as well as some 11 footers. I had already decided to make my hot tub three and a half feet tall before going to check what was available. But luckily, having seven footers made it easy to cut many three and a half foot staves without wasting material. If you're gonna build a hot tub, I highly recommend checking to see what lengths of wood are available to you and designing around that. The floor of my hot tub is a little less than five feet in diameter. I built the floor out of the same cedar wood, starting with some longer centerpieces. Then I determined the shorter lengths by using a tape measure to draw a circle, leaving a little extra space to account for the tongue and groove between each board. At this point, the boards are still rough, so I need to plane the faces smooth into a consistent thickness. I run the boards through my thickness planer. FYI, the vacuum fills up with shavings really quickly, so you gotta keep emptying the bucket. Here, I am marking out the order of the boards and which side is tongue and which side is the groove. I cut the groove out first with the data stack on my table saw. Next, I need to cut out the tongue on the other side so it perfectly fits. Using the data stack again, I cut each tongue by sneaking up on the final width incrementally, making sure not to overcut and checking to see how it fits. If the fit is tight but doable, I use ratchet straps to squeeze the boards together. Sometimes the fit is too tight, in which case I would have to sand down the tongue a little bit. I'm getting ready to take the floor from my shop to the house where it will be assembled. I can only fit half the circle in my car, so I bundle each half to go. Here is the lower deck of our house where we'll have the hot tub. Originally, we wanted to buy a plastic spa, but no one could deliver it to our house because we live on a steep hill accessible only by a narrow zigzag path with lots of obstacles in the way. So building it piece by piece seemed the next best option. I clamp together the pieces and weigh them down as they begin to bow upward. Using stainless steel screws, I begin to attach straps to the bottom of the floor, keeping everything well within the circle that I just drew. Then I lay four x four pressure treated runners that will serve as the main base for the floor. Again, I make sure to cut these short enough to stay a couple inches within the circle. I screw these in from the side and at an angle with stainless steel screws. Before I flip everything over, I sand any imperfections at the seams between the floorboards. Here, I am finding the center and drawing the circle in preparation for cutting. Using a jigsaw, I cut along the line to make a circle.
Since my jigsaw blade has a tendency to flex, my cuts don't always go straight up and down, so I use my router and flush trim bit to clean up any part that sticks out. It takes me two passes because my bit is too short. Back in the shop, I'm getting ready to cut a bunch of staves. I have to make 54 plus a few extra. I start by planing the board smooth. The staves will each be cut like a trapezoid with edges that are about 3.33 degrees in from a 90 degree angle. I use Google SketchUp to determine the number of staves and the angles. Many different combinations of angles and number of staves will work. Here I am cutting a few scrap pieces and measuring the final angle against a printout of a 3.33 degree angle. I cut an angle off the far edge of each piece. From each 2x8, I will get two staves. Then, I measure the outside width to about 3.5 inches and set up my fence and featherboard so that I can have more hands free to make many cuts consistently. These are the finished ones with two edges cut, and here are the rest with one angled side and one straight side. I repeat this process again and end up with 56 pieces. Since I only rough cut these to length, I have to set up a system to cut all these to a consistent length. I clamp down my chop saw and nail a stop block. Now is the time to cut the notch where the vertical piece locks onto the floor. I use my crosscut sled and dado stack to cut the notch about an inch deep or halfway. I don't actually know how thick the floor is because the floor assembly is somewhere else. I use a scrap piece to estimate, but I cut the rest of the pieces a little undersized for now. At the job site, I measure the thickness of the floor and cut the last piece out of the notch using a marker for consistency. I draw a couple of smaller circles which I will use to line up the inside faces of the staves as I am putting them in. I want to tap them mostly in, but not all the way, leaving a small gap so I can squeeze it all in at the end. I cut and assemble only a few at a time. If the pieces are a little tight, I might try to cut a little more. If they're too loose, I save them for another spot that's slightly thicker. Sometimes they were a little too tight, and I tried forcing them in and would break off a piece. About a quarter way through, I started smashing the edge down with a hammer to temporarily squish it to make assembly easier. I'm hoping the edge swells back up with water. Finally, I'm at the end and there's a hole big enough for one and a fraction of a stave. So I go and cut two smaller pieces to fill the gap.
Before I assemble the benches inside, I make a drain hole for a PVC pipe and cap. And because it's a nice day, we decided to oil the wood and feel a sense of accomplishment. We mix two parts boiled linseed oil with one part turpentine and brush it on. I won't go into much detail about the benches because I was kind of winging it with cheaper decking and scrap wood. I had these stainless steel bands custom made by a local welder and I'm really happy with the way they turned out. Their circumference is nearly 16 feet for a 5 foot diameter tub and I had to measure the exact length with a string and subtract just a little, but not too much, to give the bolts a little play. I bought several 6 inch full thread 5 16 inch stainless steel bolts and washers. It took long bolts and a lot of muscle to wrestle these ends together, but the two of us managed to make it work. Finally, I get to the plumbing, but I won't go into detail here either. But one bit that I struggled with was finding fittings for a thick body tub versus a thin body plastic tub. This Pentair long body fitting did the trick. My hot tub has three jets and two suctions. I bought a spa pack from spaguts.com that comes with a heater, pump, and controls. I've hooked up a filter and an ozonator. At the bottom of the filter, I have a hose that will be used to drain the tub most of the way so that I can access the plug in the floor. Now it's time to fill the tub and turn on the power. For the first few hours, the tub leaked in streams. After a couple of days of swelling, it was more like drips. But I got impatient, so when I had the opportunity, I applied marine epoxy through a syringe at the bottom edge of the tub. Now there are virtually no drips. The last lucky break was that we had an easy time finding a cover in stock locally because our tub diameter ended up being a standard five foot round number. In case you were wondering, the hot tub is 102 degrees and very nice to soak in. Next, I'll build the stairs and a privacy fence. Thank you so much for watching my video.